These are some of the times when contestants drove Chef Ramsay up the wall. How about we start with an egotistical man-child from season 16 who is easily one of the worst contestants on the show. In other words, Matt was a prick. And by the way, he's no less than Joseph. This douchebag thought that he had it in him to threaten Ramsey with a physical fight. I was on the street right now and he came up to me with that same I him up point blank. Now, those of you who have watched the season already know how big of an asshole he is on the show, but surprise, surprise, he's no better in real life. He found himself in a heated argument with another contestant from season 15. He made some racist comments toward Hassan, and if you already weren't a fan of Matt, this clash would make you downright despise him. Like, look at the filthy, disgusting things that he said. Well, of course Hassan called him out on it, but so did several other viewers. I totally agree with this user, Matt's sour attitude did get the best of him. It's crazy how he got to stay longer than Hassan on the show with that kind of foul mouth running about. The way he was targeting Hassan much after the show is absolutely inexcusable. This dude certainly has some questionable ideas, and it's quite rightly left several people wondering how he functions. But this isn't anything new. In the very first episode, he made it clear that he was a rude narcissist who was far from a team player. First up, he locked horns with Gennaro over the scallops. Matt believed that they were still undercooked, but when he sent them to Ramsey anyway, they were indeed raw. Ramsey, in his usual no-nonsense style, demanded to know who was responsible for ruining one of his favorite foods. He even threatened to kick both Matt and Andrew out if they didn't own up to it. Matt decided to point the finger at Andrew, claiming that he was pressured into serving them undercooked like that. And just for quote-unquote good measure, he even suggested they review the surveillance footage to prove it. Jeff Ramsey, though, wasn't putting up with this nonsense. The camera. Unfold your arms now, and don't give me a scallop unless it's cooked perfectly. Funny that someone who boasted about wanting to fight him couldn't even look him in the eye. If I hear you talk about a camera one more time, I'll stick a GoPro up so you can see how you are. And surprise, surprise, the guy was kicked out of the kitchen not long after. However, throughout the season, Matt kept arguing that he was being treated unfairly. What's more, he even questioned the judge's decision when he lost, all while throwing weak-ass tantrums. I'm gonna pack my up and roll the out of here. Take the punishment like a man. that, yo. I'm not doing it. What a sore loser. Chef Ramsay shouldn't have talked him into staying. Between his severely burnt scallops, unseasoned fried chicken, his extra spicy shrimp rolls, and overcooked lobster tail, the guy was a mess. Curly whirly over. Hey, hey, young man, come here, you. Chef, I want to fix Look, it. Put it on, on the tray. Man, how could you not take any feedback? Like, bro, what's the hurry? Are you rushing to cry in the corner about how much of a victim you are? Well, let's just see what he has to say. Mow the lawn means cut the grass. <laughs> Yeah, more like mode of crap. Now, what do you call it when Zeus gets yelled at? A thunderclap. What is happening? It's like vomit. Come on, please. In season 21, during the dinner service, Zeus was stationed alongside Alex handling the appetizers. But then, like you saw, things took a messy turn when he began stirring up the carbonara. It's eggs and pasta for sake. Come on, blue team. Painful. Chef Ramsay was quick to recognize how awful it was and didn't sugarcoat it when he pointed out the carbonara's, uh, distinctive appearance. That meant that Zeus had to start all over again. He did give it another shot, but it seemed like he mistook the salt for sugar or something because it turned out saltier than the freaking ocean. Alex decided to lend a hand, but Chef Ramsay quickly put a stop to that and told him to step back. He should be cooking. Two carbonara, two is up. Let's go. Yeah, okay. Get it together. Eventually, after what felt like an eternity of carbonara drama, Zeus managed to whip up one that Chef Ramsay actually approved of. Phew! They finally got those appetizers moving. But here's where things really start to take a turn. Zeus somehow thought that Billy's chicken was ready when it was practically still clucking. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because you didn't fucking cook it. Aw, that must be the saddest song I've heard all year. Anyway, Chef Ramsay summoned the entire blue team for some quick motivation. Absolute f How can we be this bad? We're not even moving at snail pace. Chef Ramsay was loud and clear. He wanted someone to step up, take charge, or they were done. Someone install some vigor. Otherwise, all of you f off. Oh, to top it all off, Zeus brought some seriously undercooked Wellingtons to the pass. It wasn't really his fault though. It was Billy who cooked them, or rather, forgot to. 
But my man, you should have double checked it because now you were gonna get zapped by Chef Ramsay's wrath. Head to the dorm, come with two individuals that don't belong here. Now get the f out of here. He threw the entire team out, just like you expected. Sometimes, Ramsay's anger doesn't just come in the form of fiery outbursts, it's more subtle but equally telling. Take the time when Zeus, even though he wasn't on the chopping block that night, asked to have a word. He recognized his subpar performance during the service and believed that he didn't share the same hunger for victory as Billy and Charlene did. I feel Charlene and Billy want this more than I do. Chef Ramsay sent him back to the lineup, clearly not pleased with his self-doubt. However, after Charlene's elimination, Chef Ramsay didn't hold back. He called Zeus out for almost giving up too easily and promptly gave him the boot. You do not deserve to be here. Give me a jacket. Yeah, you can only disappoint Chef Ramsay so much before he sends you home. But guess who comes up first when you Google creepy guy from Hell's Kitchen? No, seriously, try it out for yourself and tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, that's Andrew for you. Sous Chef Scott reminded Andrew that the garnishes had to be ready before the proteins, so he went turbo mode and asked Jay to send the mashed potatoes to the pass. He then started rushing through the rest of his garnishes. Stay cold. Stay there. What the fuck are you doing? Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. But when the mashed potatoes got sent back for being way too runny, he took matters into his own hands and started mixing them with a fresh batch he was making. Now, this move obviously didn't sit well with Chef Ramsay, who wasn't thrilled at all. He put the thick stuff in, you had the runny to it. That was a brilliant idea, Chef. But to make things worse, Andrew decided to ask Chef Ramsay why it was such a big deal. Now, you see, there are some unwritten rules in HK that contestants should be aware of. Rule number one, do not question Chef Ramsay. Rule number two, don't talk back to him. And rule number three, do not question Chef Ramsay. Andrew just broke all those rules and decided to challenge Chef Ramsay's wisdom, saying that it was a brilliant idea. The famous chef tried to explain why it was a no-go, but Andrew wasn't having any of it. It's gone! That's not true. Here's a guy who didn't get a single thing right, lacked care, showed no respect, and on top of everything, he kept arguing with, to quote Jason, the Jay-Z of fucking restaurants. He's like the Jay-Z of fucking restaurants. You don't talk back to a man like that. Chef Ramsay had had enough, and he made it crystal clear that he was on the verge of losing his temper. But despite the warning signs flashing neon, Andrew just wouldn't let up. And so, Chef Ramsay just showed him the door right into the dining room. And you know what? You're a fucking joke to the industry. Yeah. Shaken by that comment, he was ready to hit the road. Yeah, he was about to leave the competition. I'm walking out the damn door. What does it look like I'm doing? That man asked me to leave and you expect me to stay here. Guess who didn't do his homework and watch previous seasons before coming to the show? Jean-Philippe, though, attempted to talk some sense into him, suggesting that Chef Ramsay was just giving him a test and there were folks out there who'd kill to be in his shoes. And you won't believe what he did next. This, arguably, was the most bizarre moment in the history of the show. You know what? I mean, take my shoes, Jay. Poor JP, he looks so damn uncomfortable. And what the heck was that? Season 7 was messed up right from the start. It had so many mid-service ejections, like the one in the very first episode. Meanwhile, Fran was holding down the fort at the appetizer station with Holly by her side. Now, the drama began when Fran served up her potatoes. Beautiful potatoes, I think. Let's go, madam. I think he'll like them. Oh, the misplaced confidence. They were criticized for being overcooked, pine-sized, and this. And that one there, well, I can't, even, I can't even describe that one there. Come on, ladies. He then asked Fran for the time on some new potatoes. And what was the response? Well, crickets. She stayed quiet until Holly had to repeat the question, and finally, Fran shouted out, two minutes. Chef Ramsay had had enough, and he decided to give Fran a quick tutorial on how to properly toss those potatoes. But then, Chef Ramsay was bewildered when she revealed that she was scared of the grease. Or was she? She's scared of the oil. What did you say? No, no, I'm scared of you, Chef. The famous chef wasn't having any of that attitude. It was a clear reflection of her lacking self-assurance, and the famous chef couldn't help but take a dip. I'm afraid of you, Fran. Yeah, you scare me. As the hectic dinner service raged on, Fran found herself knee-deep in a lobster risotto mishap. She diligently worked on her dish, pouring her heart and soul into every store of that pot. But here's the twist. She unknowingly tossed a crab into the mix instead of the cherished lobster. The moment Chef Ramsay's eagle eye caught this, oh boy, you have to see what happened next. Someone explain to Fran what the fuck a lobster looks like. But she was just tired of getting yelled at. 
Yeah, I made a mistake, but give me a break! Now, pay attention to what I'm about to say here. Tired of being yelled at, but not tired of making mistakes because she continued on with her streak. It was 45 minutes into the dinner service, and the red kitchen was serving up, well, close to nothing. Jamie, determined to make a difference, brought her first fillet of beef to the pass. He questioned the dish, and Jamie, in a bid to make things right, offered to pop it back into the oven. Chef Ramsay, however, had reached his limit. Dare you touch it? It's like cold cream on a fucking hot steak. We saw it coming. Touch that. Touch that. It's cold. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Raise your hand if you have a bad habit of laughing at serious moments. I know I'm guilty of it. Chef Ramsay, not one for jokes in the heat of service, gave her a stern lecture, reminding everyone that the situation was far from funny. But Maria, oh Maria. And you think it's funny? But you're right. No, no, you're right. <laughs> if that wasn't bad enough, her smug attitude made it even worse. Maria! Chef, nothing's funny. You're not laughing, no? no. I've seen things. In one decisive blow, he booted Maria, Jamie, and Fran out of the kitchen. But somebody decided to throw a tantrum and received a strict ultimatum. If you don't get out, I'll drag you out. Jeez, that was scary. For the second time since season six, Chef Ramsay was so done that he was forced to do this. Useless. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, he simply walked out of his own kitchen. What's worse is that this was a black jacket service. It was a star studded dinner gathering with people like Steve Kojo Kojokaru and Paris Hilton. Russell was on the appetizers and had a chat with Jillian about them, but things went south when her scallops turned into rubber. She had to start from scratch. Yeah, they're overcooked. Jillian, they're overcooked. Okay, spoiler alert, things are about to go from bad to worse. Now, in the dining area, a squad of 12 marines had rolled in and taken their seats. Russell decided to jump in and give Jillian a hand, but the scallop situation was still a struggle. To make matters worse, Nona had to do a do-over on her lobster spaghetti. When they finally sent their appetizers to the pass, Jillian's scallops passed the test, but Nana's pasta was apparently as raw as it could have possibly been. Crunchy spaghetti. What are we doing here? That quote-unquote pep talk seemed to work, and Nona and Jillian managed to bounce back and finally got the first table out. After 45 minutes, the appetizers were flowing smoothly. It was time to tackle the entrees, and Ramsay gave Trev a reminder to keep things moving. However, Jillian had a bit of a halibut mishap that required Russell to reluctantly step in and help. If you don't do it right, then get the fuck out of the way and let me do it. I'm not gonna let us go down that easy and that quick. Thanks to Russell's assist though, the first batch of entrees started leaving the kitchen. Trev and Jillian tried to get the garnish times from Gail, but she seemed to be in the silent treatment mode, leaving everyone exasperated. There was a complete communication breakdown, and Chef Ramsay had to dish out his first warning. He was at his wit's end, threatened to walk out, and the frustration with Gail's lack of communication reached a boiling point. Then came the final straw when Trev sent out a raw ribeye, and Gail brought out some cold fries. <laughs> You look at me now. God, the pain and disappointment was palpable. That's when he and Sushef Scott decided that they'd had enough. Where's your passion? And out. We are fucked. Come on. Yeah, that's an understatement. Up next, Zach and Nedra's beef was legendary, right? Bye, Chewy. What the fuck is bye, Chewy? You mean bye, Chewy, boo? The blue team in season 11 seriously lacked some camaraderie. Nobody trusted anybody. Nezra is like Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, wah, wah. And don't forget this gem. I'm a little nervous because I got Twiddle D and Twiddle Dump prepping my station. The team was a mess and it showed during the service. Nedra was on the hunt for ingredients and Zach, trying to be helpful, pointed her in the right direction. However, Nedra seemed to be taking her time, moving at a pace that Zach compared to, well... Like a fucking Picasso or something. Move your ass! How very wacky of you, Zacky. But things took a nosedive when Nedra sent out a risotto that didn't hit the mark. Too salty! Gosh, the salt! It was practically a salt lick. John, understandably, was frustrated because he knew this mistake would slow down the entrees. Nedra, come on, man. Pull, pull your shit together. Anthony, feeling the pressure, believed that Nedra wasn't exactly contributing to the blue team's success. Recognizing the need for a leader, Anthony asked Zack to step in and assist Nedra with the cold appetizers. After a refire attempt that finally made the cut, Nedra brushed Zack aside when he tried to help with the appetizers. That's when Chef Ramsay curiously asked this. Why she kicked you off there? She said she don't need any help. My worry is the slowness. She explained that she didn't require any assistance, but the famous chef remained puzzled. 
While Nedra was determined to prove herself, Chef Ramsay saw things differently. He explained that if he were on the blue team, she'd be relieved of the appetizer duties and moved to the garnish station. Well, everything was spiraling out of control. The shit, the disarray, the disorganization, and look, look, look. Chef Ramsay insisted that someone with more control would need to step in and clean up her disorganized and chaotic station. And well, that was gonna happen if things didn't improve soon. And someone with a pair of balls would step up and take over that fucking mess. Zack thought that he had the biggest pair, and so he attempted to lend a hand and bring some order to her station. However, he was met with resistance from Nedra, who insisted that she didn't need help because, well, check this out. He is a stupid mother, mother, okay? You see, John even warned her that he'd take over the appetizers if she couldn't regain control, but all in vain. An hour into the service, the blue team was still stuck on the appetizers. Chef Ramsay ordered John to redo the scallops because his initial attempt looked like they had been boiled. When Zack tried to offer input, John just brushed it off only to send scallops that were improperly seared and, well, you have to see what happened next. Mosh, mosh, mosh. It's just a fucking joke. Yes, chef. Anthony couldn't hide his frustration and called out the whole situation for the embarrassment that it was. Finally, Chef Ramsay had reached his limit and kicked the entire blue team out of the kitchen. Get out! Get out! And guess what? The red team wasn't any better. They were kicked out not long after, and on her way out, guess what Cindy had to say? Fuck me! Excuse me, madam! Russia. Fuck me! How about fuck you? Ah, so impending doom approaches, huh? Get out! Fuck, man! A little redundant, but it did make me cry of laughter. Now, let's talk about what happened during the sixth dinner service of season six when Tanil was holding down the garnish station. Well, that's two sixes, but there may as well have been a third, considering how much of a personal hell Chef Ramsay had to have been in. Anyway, at one point, Tanil whipped up way more spinach than was needed, and Chef Ramsay wasn't too pleased. He immediately let loose on her. Kill the spinach to order, you lazy cow! Now, that didn't sit well with Tanil. She believed that Chef Ramsay needed to learn a thing or two about showing some respect, especially since she was giving it her all. He's a disrespectful British motherfucker! And she wasn't the only one who hated the comment. Several viewers pointed out that it was just plain offensive. In fact, Ramsay has received a lot of flack from a bunch of media agencies because of this. For instance, The Globe and The Mail called him out by saying, Ramsay's personality seems to thrive on insulting others. There are lots of fields where the F word is used liberally, but I know of no profession where a male leader could routinely and publicly call female trainees you stupid bitch or you stupid cow and not be held up for harassment. Hmm, I think critique crosses the line into bullying when it stops being constructive and starts targeting a person's appearance. What are your thoughts though? Let me know in the comments section down below. Anyway, coming back, as if that wasn't enough drama, Tanil's mashed potatoes decide to stick to the pot and didn't quite measure up for a two-person serving. In her defense, Tanil didn't want to repeat her mistake of serving extra portions like last time, but Chef Ramsay accused her of not taking things seriously and completely let it all loose. You upset now? Yeah, I'm fucking pissed like you are, cause you're crap. And that was the breaking point. However, in a surprising turn of events, showing a rare amount of spine, Tanil fired right back. You're crap. Yeah, that outburst left the entire team stunned. But not Chef Ramsay. He didn't hesitate to show her the door as she continued to hurl her insults his way. Get the fuck out of there! Fuck you! Things didn't cool down in the back either. Tanil and Chef Ramsay got into an even more heated showdown, with Ramsay delivering a stern warning about never calling him crap unless she wanted to call it her last day in Hell's Kitchen. Tanil though, wasn't gonna back down. She passionately proclaimed that she was giving it her all, but what she said next changed the entire game for her. Oh, let me in the kitchen! Just let me in the kitchen! You know what? That move was actually pretty clever. It was direct, sharply precise, and something that made Chef Ramsay realize that there was still a heap of passion and determination left in her. He must have seen something really special in her because, honestly, he's given the boot to a ton of contestants for much less. Over on Reddit, a user asked if Jen's meltdown topped Tanil's, and for most, it was a resounding yes. Someone even pointed out that Chef Ramsay had considered sending Tanil packing after their big showdown. But here's the catch. Tanil had always been a firecracker full of passion. Admittedly, her strong personality didn't always sit well with everyone. But on the flip side, Jen didn't strike me as quite as fiery during the show. Don't get me wrong, she had an attitude, but there's a difference between passion and arrogance. Chef Ramsay must have sensed this too, since Jen had a knack for being quite a hypocrite. 
I can think of a ton of times during Season 4 where she either messed up her teammates' efforts or bent the rules during the challenges. When the going got tough, she often took the path of least resistance. So, when she started blaming Chef Ramsay for undermining her, he likely felt a sense of deja vu and wanted no part of it. It's understandable. Even though both contestants made it to the final four, Tennille's intentions always appeared to be more honorable compared to Jan's. Yeah, absolutely no doubt about that. But what happened in Season 5 was even crazier. The new contestants of Season 5 were ready to give a good impression. And as usual, the competition began with the signature dish challenge. As all the chefs got their dishes ready, Chef Ramsay was anxious to taste them. Not only would it give him a chance to understand them, but also their skill level. While there were several dishes that impressed him, others made him wonder if the contestants had ever cooked before. There are tons of reality cooking show competitions out there, but what makes Hell's Kitchen stand out is Chef Ramsay's savage replies. Well, of course, as viewers, we can't taste the dishes, but we can sure enjoy Ramsay's display of emotion on screen. So, who do you think was at the receiving end of the famous chef's rage this time? Our very own corporate buffet cook from Charlotte, North Carolina, Lacey D'Angelo. Lacey was the fifth contestant to have her dish judged by Ramsay and presented a rather unusual combination of dishes. Lacey seemed to expect praise for her strange mix of sauce and meat. But anyone who actually heard about the dish would give it a second thought before tasting it. Well, sometimes weird combinations do work, but chicken and blackberry sauce? When Ramsay saw the dish, he was pretty surprised. Since it was a weird combination, Chef Ramsay wanted to understand where the idea came from. So when he asked her, Lacey replied by saying something pretty interesting. She claimed that it was from a corporate dining buffet style restaurant, which she worked at by the way. For those of you who are ardent followers of the show, you might already know that Chef Ramsay isn't really a fan of buffet style cuisine. But would Lacey manage to sway his opinion? Ramsay braved himself to try the dish out. And when he finally did, he couldn't hold himself back from spitting it right out. If that wasn't humiliating enough, he then said something that would surely hurt Lacey's pride. He said, You surf, they eat. Yes, sir. Straight after, they vomit. Well, that's not something you'd like to hear for the very first time from Chef Ramsay, right? But that doesn't even compare to what happened to the eighth person who had his dish judged, Charlie McKay. So let's see what this prep chef from Las Vegas came up with. Charlie presented his lamb chops that were arranged in a circle with some mashed potatoes on the side. He obviously wanted to impress Ramsay with his plating, but this is how he reacted. Looks like a Ferris wheel. That is a joke. A Ferris wheel? Chef Ramsay sure does have a crazy imagination, since I probably wouldn't have thought of a Ferris wheel by looking at this dish. But that comparison is still way better than what he told Colleen Creek, who was the 11 contestant to present her dish. However, when Chef Ramsay picked it up, he had no idea someone could make a dish that looked like diapers. That's when Colleen spoke up and introduced her smoked chicken enchiladas with poblano cream sauce. God, I can't get the image of diapers out of my head now. However, before Ramsay tasted her dish, he asked her what she did. Colleen revealed that she was a culinary instructor, and when Chef Ramsay asked her if she was a trained chef, she astonished Chef Ramsay by saying no. So, someone who wasn't even trained herself was training others? Now, that doesn't sound right. And to make things worse, she revealed that she charged a hefty sum of $300 just for a couple of hours. Chef Ramsay was already beginning to have his doubts, but let's see if Colleen's dish would help clear things up. Sadly, Ramsay detested it and spat it right out. He couldn't believe how this contestant could call herself a culinary instructor when all she managed to cook up was crap. Colleen then tried to put up a brave face, but Ramsay said something that pissed her off. I feel like I need some plastic wrap on my ass. She didn't appreciate Chef Ramsay's feedback and found it downright insulting. She retorted back by saying something she probably shouldn't have. Colleen tried to defend her position as an instructor by saying that she charged people for teaching manners. Obviously, this was an open dig at Chef Ramsay, but he wasn't going to let it slide. What Colleen did was unlock the doorway to hell since Chef Ramsay shut her down in the most iconic way possible. Just listen to what he said. Okay, please, Miss Manners, off back in line. Well, she had that coming since nobody dared to teach Chef Ramsay about manners in his own house. As for the remaining chefs, most of them received average feedback and the signature dish challenge came to an end. With that first challenge out of the way, it was now time for the contestants to prepare for the first opening night. During the dinner service, Giovanni Filippone and Carol Scott were assigned as waiters. And when Chef Ramsay called out the red team's first ticket, they irritated him by not giving him a response. 20 minutes into the service, Giovanni finally brought the blue team's first ticket. 
As Chef Ramsay called out their order, Robert Hesse tried to cut in and interrupt. This truly angered the famous chef. You call out the order then. You call out the order. In the red team, Lacey was back to her antics. When she sent the first order of scallops up, it came out raw. She then tried to blame the oven for not working properly, and Chef Ramsay was annoyed. To make things even worse, she didn't turn the gas on. This woman clearly wasn't all there. Meanwhile, in the blue team, Ben Wolanka and Robert sent their first spaghetti order to the pass. And once again, it turned out to be raw. With both teams sending out unacceptable orders, Ramsay noticed the great culinary instructor adding mascarpone cheese into the risotto. But just when Chef Ramsay was about to school her, it looked like Colleen cast a spell. Because, well, for the first time ever, we saw this happen on Hell's Kitchen. We don't put mascarpone cream cheese in the spaghetti! That was a total blackout. When has that ever happened on the show? But before Colleen began to count herself lucky, once the lights came back on, Ramsay was back at her again. 20 minutes into the service, as things resumed, Chef Ramsay noticed that Colleen was about to make a new pasta dish in a dirty pan. Chef Ramsay couldn't believe that she was actually an instructor. And of all things in the world that she could have said, Colleen claimed that she couldn't find a clean pan. And this left Chef Ramsay in dismay. Pan! Thank you. Pan! Pan! Two hours into the service, Colleen was seen giving instructions to the other contestants. Was she trying to take Chef Ramsay's position in the kitchen? Now, that would never be possible in any parallel universe. But Chef Ramsay made sure she understood that loud and clear when he said this. Now, you're talking to them like your cookery skill. You want $300? The thing is, even if Ramsay wanted to ignore her, Colleen repeatedly kept doing things that grabbed his attention. Like this time, when Chef Ramsay saw her cooking way more spaghetti than necessary. Colleen had literally dumped loads of spaghetti into a single pot and kept giving excuses for the prolonged cooking times. Ramsay then just instructed her to cook less spaghetti since this would help her cook it faster. Chef Ramsay couldn't understand why so much spaghetti was being cooked in the first place, but then he found this. No wonder you're confused! Colleen was trying to test Chef Ramsay's patience right from the time she entered Hell's Kitchen. But how long until he snapped for good? Two and a half hours into the service, Colleen finally cooked her spaghetti properly and sent it along with her risotto to the pass. However, Ramsay noticed that the risotto looked a bit off. I mean, just take a look at this. That looks really odd, doesn't it? Would this odd looking risotto at least taste good? When Chef Ramsay tasted it, he thought it was so bad that he actually struggled to swallow it. After calling it the worst risotto he's ever had in his entire career, Chef Ramsay asked who was responsible with preparing it. And well, no points for guessing, it was Colleen. But how could she mess this up? You're not gonna believe what you're about to see next. Who put sugar in there? I grabbed this, I thought that was salt. Yeah, so Colleen had just dumped in sugar instead of salt. Ramsay was so furious that he was at a loss for words, and the only thing that he could do was slam the pan on the floor. Well, I'm sure at the back of his mind, he wanted to slam it on Colleen. But once again, it looks like she just got lucky and the floor had to take the heat. But since we're talking about Chef Ramsay's savage replies anyway, how could I not bring up this one where Chef Ramsay took a dig at Will Kokel? While Colleen was screwing up big time in the blue kitchen, Will was struggling at the garnish station. When Will forgot the mashed potatoes for his order, Charlie and Robert came in to help him out. Seeing three guys at the garnish station, Chef Ramsay said, Charlie's on the garnish, Robert's on the garnish, and Will's on Planet Cuckoo. Three hours into the service, with hardly any entrees coming out, customers started to get impatient. As a result, they began to leave, probably to Planet Cuckoo. But in this next service, Chef Ramsay was surprised with the performance of more than one contestant. The only problem was they had all let him down. The fourth episode of the fourth season was a family night dinner service. And after three consecutive poor services, Chef Ramsay was looking forward to some much needed improvement and good performance from the contestants. The family night menu featured fresh pasta, barbecued chicken wings, and hamburgers. The menu looked simple and easy for all the experienced chefs. While you'd assume that everyone nailed this service, as the saying goes, never assume anything. In the red team, Vanessa Gunhill wanted to redeem herself after her poor performance in the previous service. So she quickly took vocal control of her team. When she sent her first attempt of chowder to the pass, it was deemed delicious. And Chef Ramsay told the red team to keep the momentum going and not lose it. But would they really be able to continue? Well, the blue kitchen was running behind with their first order. LaRosse Adrelin communicated with Matt Sigil, but then Chef Ramsay warned Matt. I have to say, the comment that Ramsay made was absolutely insane. 
You serve me raw chicken, I'll pickle your ball. Let's go. Then, Ben Kaler brought his first onion rings to the pass, but they were rejected for not being crispy enough. Jeff Ramsey was so dismayed that he lectured him about the same thing. I want a crispy onion ring, f*** off you, yeah? 45 minutes into the service, the blue team finally sent out their appetizers. The blue team's customers were happy with the onion rings, but a chicken dish was sent back for being raw. And this made Chef Ramsey furious. Come here, you f prick. What the f are you doing? But things were only starting to get heated in the kitchen since Shayna Zadik did something crazy. She started a fire. Seeing this, Chef Ramsey asked her not to burn the kitchen down. But it looks like that's exactly what she had in mind since this is what happened next. <laughs> Since Vanessa had to leave to get her hand checked, the red team was down by one member for the night. Would this affect their performance? Two hours into the service, the red team had 12 tickets left while the blue team only had 10. However, the blue team made Chef Ramsey furious when Matt served a burger that was way too small. Ramsey schooled him for the mistake and asked Matt why he was cooking the burgers so early. Chef Ramsey then compared the burgers to the last thing that would come to your mind. And this reply is definitely savage. They're like ice hockey puck. Little balls are f***ing, look at them. F***ing shit. Bobby Anderson then took charge and helped the team send out acceptable orders. But when Craig Schneider delivered his spaghetti, he made a major mistake. It was of meatballs, not clams. When he came back with the correct order, it came out raw, which infuriated Chef Ramsey. Since the red team finished all of their tickets, they were asked to help the blue team finish theirs. Ramsey then assigned Jen Gavin to help Ben and sarcastically referred to him as Chef Ben. If that wasn't embarrassing enough, Chef Ramsey then made a remark that made Ben feel like drowning himself. Let's give a big round of applause to the captain hitting an iceberg on the f***ing Titanic. Meanwhile, Craig refused to take help and was trying to act smart. Would all of his smartness pay off? Ramsey even told Craig that he was making him nervous and just as expected, Craig lost control over himself. He first accidentally grabbed a hot pan and burnt his hand. And then, when Chef Ramsay asked him for a time, he disrespectfully replied by saying that it was coming out. If that wasn't enough, Craig shocked everyone by doing this. Listen. Post dinner service, Chef Ramsay ridiculed Craig for his slow performance on the pasta. He then told Ben how surprised he was by him, and Ben assumed that Chef Ramsay was praising him. But in truth, it was anything but a compliment. You surprised me to how sh you are. Uh. However, in this next service, one of the contestants was so lost that Chef Ramsay had to turn into a math teacher. We all know that he's a great cook, but a math teacher? In the third episode of season 6, after a dramatic elimination, the contestants were ready for a new day. Dave Levy and Kevin Cottle were injured during the punishment, and this greatly concerned the blue team. However, the show had to go on. That night, Dave and Lovely Jackson were assigned as the waiters. As the blue team received their first order, Van Hurd became vocal pretty quickly and communicated well with Robert Hesse. But Van was more excited than necessary. He yelled at Robert to go faster, and seeing this, Chef Ramsay wasn't happy. He's shouting out, and it's confusing everybody. Wait to God, Van, I'll fucking pummel you. In the red kitchen, Ramsay called out the first order, but Tennille Middleton annoyed him by not giving any response. As Tennille got started on the first order, Suzanne Schlitt tried to warn her about using too much oil, but Tennille decided to ignore her. Would avoiding this piece of advice backfire? It looks like it did, since this is what Chef Ramsay had to say. Stop! They're swimming in grease! Put it down, please. Take them out. In the blue kitchen, Robert was in such a rush to bring his dish to the pass that he almost lost his footing. Robert then asked Andy Husbands to drop the scallops. But when Andy dropped too many compared to the size of the pan, Robert was annoyed. After all the haste, when Robert brought the scallops to the pass, they were all rejected. And Chef Ramsay schooled him for that. But instead of going back to the cooking, Robert confronted Chef Ramsay, which led to an argument between the two. In the red kitchen, while Ariel Contreras, Fox, and Sabrina Gresset's appetizers were deemed delicious, Tennille wasn't ready with her scallops. Chef Ramsay then asked her not to put boiled scallops back in the pan. But since there was a lot of commotion, Tennille had difficulty concentrating. She was finally able to send out acceptable scallops, but not before starting a fire at her station. Meanwhile, in the dining room, Lovely took 42 minutes to bring a ticket, which annoyed Chef Ramsay. Imbecile. And when Amanda brought her lamb to the pass, one chop was missing. Ramsay was so frustrated that he schooled Amanda, but despite that, she disappointed him. Here's a quick look at their interaction. Three threes or what? Three. Three threes of three. F me. 
He then asked her for the second time, and Amanda answered with six. Chef Ramsay wasn't gonna let her get away with this. And so, he asked her the same question for the third time, and thankfully, she correctly answered with nine. Finally! Was Chef Ramsay happy? Nope, he chewed her right out. Then give me nine f***ing chops, you stupid thick bitch! Ramsay then noticed that her lamb was boiled, and schooled the entire red team for her mistakes. Where was their teamwork? Why wasn't anyone trying to help her? A few minutes later, the red kitchen only had three tickets left, and the blue team was on their last. Kevin was ready with the chicken, but Robert discouraged everyone when he declared that he needed 12 minutes on the salmon. All the while, both teams were neck and neck in competition, and eventually managed to finish all of their tickets. But despite that, this is what Chef Ramsay had to say. That confirms we completed the service, but trust me, I am not ready to celebrate. Who said it's easy to impress Chef Ramsay? So, these were the times that Ramsay was an absolute savage. I'll be rolling out more videos over the next few days, so make sure to pay attention to my uploads. And if you liked the video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys!